Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Stardom Space and Science Network's new web series on astronomy, Clear Skies. I'm George. And I'm Eric. And the first thing you need to know is that we are not professionals. I am not a professional scientist. We're not professional astronomers. And we are certainly not professional actors. We're just regular people who got interested in astronomy, and now we want to pass that interest on to other people. So we're here at the Space Foundation of Colorado Springs today. What we want to do is walk you through some of the basic stuff about astronomy that you might have questions about, but you weren't sure where to go to ask. Things like... Grandma and Grandpa got me a telescope for my birthday. Now what? What do eyepieces do? How do they work? Where do I get one? What's that constellation in the sky? There's too many stars and I don't understand. I really want to buy a telescope for my son for Christmas. I just don't know what to get. I want to learn more, but I have no idea where to start. So that's where Eric and I and Stardom come in. We're here to answer your questions and make it easier for you to move on to the next step. No matter what your experience level is, if you're a beginner, an amateur, you know nothing, or maybe you're even an astrophysicist. We're gonna have a little bit of everything for everyone. So let's get started with the first real question in astronomy. What the heck is astronomy? That one's easy. Astronomy is the scientific study of the universe and everything in it. That includes things just within our own solar system, like the sun, the moon, the planets and their moons, and also things outside it, like other galaxies, nebulae, black holes, quasars, red dwarfs, exoplanets, dark matter. Whoa, whoa, slow down, hold down, turbo, settle down. The most important part of that first part was scientific study. So in astronomy, we use things like math, physics, chemistry, fact-based observations to observe the universe. So, if you thought this series was gonna be about how Venus and Jupiter are gonna be in conjunction next Thursday on your birthday, and that means you're gonna meet your soulmate on Friday, you are in the wrong place. So click away right now. Go, go on, go ahead, click away. All right, so astronomy, our ancestors have been doing it for tens of hundreds of thousands of years. They've learned to look up at the night sky and predict using all those little points of light, as well as the sun and the moon. They've learned how to predict when they should plant crops, when they should harvest them, and when they should move to a warmer place for the winter. There are records of the ancient Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Maya, the Chinese, even the Native Americans, host of other cultures who studied the sky. They predicted eclipses. They developed incredibly accurate calendars. They were aware that those five points of light up in the sky that moved differently from everything else were different. Even, the Greeks even called them Astralis Planetae, or wandering stars. They even created accurate models of how they thought the solar system worked. And the amazing part is they did all of this with only basic tools like their eyes, sticks, and rocks, because back then there were no telescopes. In fact, telescopes for astronomy didn't come along until the 1600s when Galileo used his first one for studying outer space. If you want to learn more about how ancient cultures studied the sky, Google the word archaeoastronomy. So, you mentioned Galileo. Tell us a little bit about Galileo. Who was he? What did he do? Galileo Galilei was born in 1564 in Italy. As a student, he studied math and physics, eventually becoming a mathematics professor at the University of Padua in 1592. In 1609, he's credited with building the first telescope used for astronomy. This telescope magnifies objects by 20 times. He was able to use it to study the moon and identify craters and mountain ranges, note how Mars changed its size throughout its orbit. He was able to see Saturn's rings, which he misidentified and he thought were moons. And he also discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter. And these are now named the Galilean moons after him. Now, a long line of scientists have contributed to astronomy throughout the years. And there's probably quite a few names that you would recognize. There's people like Nicholas Copernicus, Johannes Kepler, Sir Isaac Newton, Tycho Brahe, William Herschel, Charles Messier, Sir Edmund Halley, Clyde Tombaugh, Albert Einstein, Edwin Hubble, Stephen Hawking, and Carl Sagan, Caroline Shoemaker, Margaret Burbridge, Vera Rubin. In one most of you probably recognize from his numerous appearances on TV and the internet, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I recently read a book by him, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, and it was actually really interesting. The director of Stardom, Ron Sparkman, was actually able to ask him a question on Star Talk. Every one of these people, from Galileo to Dr. Tyson, started off their career by studying something they were interested in. Whether that was math or physics or some other kind of science, 
what they did was they just got into the interest and kept it. And with astronomy, that's also what it is. Looking up and wondering not just what's up there, but how does it work. And that's really what astronomy is all about. It's wondering what's out there, but then learning about it, going out and doing something about it, doing it yourself. The internet today offers an incredible opportunity for research. You don't have to leave your bedroom to learn about the moons of Mars or to even travel around the solar system. Okay? You don't even have to have your own telescope, but it's better if you do. In fact, a lot of astronomy today isn't done by someone sitting outside at night with their eye pressed to an eyepiece, sketching and making observations all night. Instead, it's taken by camera through a giant telescope on a distant mountaintop. Well, that's true, but as a beginner, being able to sit outside under a dark night, stare at the stars, and to discover things with your own two eyes for the very first time, to learn the constellations, the nebula, to learn about distant galaxies and objects, to learn them yourself, that's what astronomy is all about. And the thing is, anyone can do it. I'm only 14 years old and I started doing it when I was four. And another thing is, you don't have to do it alone. There are astronomical societies and astronomy clubs all over the world, and every one of them would love to have you. We've been members of the Colorado Springs Astronomical Society since I was nine. I joined it for a project, and ever since then, I've been a member, and they've taught me a lot of stuff since then. But discussions about astronomical societies and clubs, that's another episode you're going to have to come back. So for more information on astronomy, space, and science, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Startup Space, and startupspace.com. And hey, don't forget, show the kids. They'd love to see other kids involved in astronomy, and it'll pique their interest too. Bye, everybody, and clear, clear skies. What's up, everybody? Ron Sparkman here from Stardom, and today we've been filming our uh, astronomy and telescope series here at the Space Foundation. We're calling it Clear Skies, and we just finished up. We just wrapped everything, and we want to kind of talk a little bit about where we've been today at the Space Foundation at the Discovery Center. So we have the director of the Discovery Center, Travis Shank, here. Travis, can you tell us a little bit about the Discovery Center and what it is you guys do at the Space Foundation? Well, the Space Foundation has been advocating for space since 1983, and we really want to make space a part of your life. Part of that mission, we've brought space down to Earth here at the Discovery Center in Colorado Springs. Our Discovery Center is a hybrid science center and museum, and we really work to get you hands-on with some of the technology in space, see the artifacts that made space exploration possible, and teach things, just like this series, to make sure that space education happens all over the world. So we're excited to be able to host this for Stardom and to be able to uh, share our center a little bit with people out there. And uh, that's one of the really cool things about the Space Foundation is they're always uh, very giving, always out there in the community doing some really amazing things. And uh, so you guys actually saw a little bit of science on the sphere today, and it's probably my favorite thing in the world. So can you tell us a little bit about what uh, science on the sphere is and a little bit about how you guys uh, utilize it differently than what other museums in the country may do? It's true. There are over 100 science on the sphere installations worldwide, mm -hmm. uh, but we've installed ours in a theater setting where you can actually have a live tour of the solar system, a way to travel through space and see each of the planets. You may have actually seen the moon or Mercury or uh, some of the other planets in our solar system or some of the interesting things that we've explored in space. And so Science on a Sphere is a great way to communicate that with us. And so it's like coming and experiencing your own uh, little cosmos show, a live one. Uh, shout out to Neil deGrasse Tyson there for that. NDT. <laughs> and uh, can you tell us a little bit about where people can find you on, on the interwebs and uh, on social media? You can find out more about the Space Foundation at spacefoundation.org. You can visit discoverspace.org to learn about the Discovery Center. And you can find us by following us on Facebook or Twitter. And hashtag Space uh, Foundation is where you'll uh, find more information about what we're doing uh, all over the world. Not just here in Colorado, but across the country and across the world. Fantastic. And everybody, make sure to like, up, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next episode.